I want us to go to the book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 25. Romans chapter 7 and verse 25. My topic today is prayers to activate the fruitfulness of the mind. Amen. Romans 7 and verse 25. The Bible says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Amen. Now, I want you to be very, very attentive because you may have to refer to these notes for a long time. And the teaching that God will give you today, you may have to keep referring uh, to it to refresh you for where God is taking you. Somebody say amen. The Bible says, with the mind, I serve the Lord. Somebody say, with the mind, I serve the Lord. I said it is prayers to activate the fruitfulness of the mind. God wants to use your mind to serve him and serve his purposes on earth. And we agreed in the last two days that the blessing is God's empowerment to be fruitful. So today, I want us to tackle one way, the blessing of God. The blessing of fruitfulness finds expression in a child of God. I want us to tackle that. Uh -huh. And uh, which is that way? Number one, when God's blessing comes upon God's children, it manifests in form of divine wisdom and knowledge. All by the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. It manifests as divine wisdom and knowledge. That's why we are saying that our mind must be fruitful so we can be able to serve the Lord. Can I hear somebody say amen? Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. The Bible says, God gives wisdom, knowledge, Enjoy to those who please him. God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy to those who please him. Wisdom and knowledge talks about several things. Allow me to be very systematic. It talks about creative ideas. It talks about ability to see opportunities where others only see problems. I'm talking about wisdom and knowledge. It talks about ability to see ahead and act accordingly. These are the impartation that comes to a child of God so that their mind can be fruitful and they can manifest the blessings of God on this celestial earth. Say amen, somebody. All these manifestations are divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. And yet, they are practically implemented. Let me say this. There is nothing like financial poverty. And that I said this so many times. There is nothing like financial poverty. What is there is idea poverty. Mm -hmm. Because a child of God, full of the Holy Spirit, will be full of wealth generating ideas. A child of God that is full of the Holy Spirit Somebody say, I am full of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. A single idea by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, a single wealth creating idea can change your life forever. One single idea from the Holy Spirit can wipe all your financial tears. Just one single idea. And I'm glad to let you know, this week, your mind shall be fertilized by the Holy Spirit. With divine ideas. And financially, you shall take off. I say financially, you shall take off. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, a divine inspiration may come to you as a divine instruction or a divine direction. Look at us here, gathered here, feeling nice and getting blessed. It was an idea given to our father. It was an idea given to our father by the name JCC. And through that idea, look at all of us. I got married here. Dignity has been 
you know, imparted in my life here. My life is changing here. Somebody say, me too. Say with me, me too. You are a, you are a beneficiary of one single idea. One single idea. Hear me. God will give you an idea where others will come and get shadow under it. God will give you an idea that will cause many to get food on their table. God will give you an idea that will make you a solution in this country. Say amen with some power. So it may come as a divine instruction mm, or a divine direction. Somebody say amen. You know what you're going to pray today because this is for prayer. You're going to pray that God will fertilize our mind. That, that God will cause our mind to download divine instructions and directions and turn us into solutions in our world. Somebody say amen. And I want you to be very keen because between now and the end of February, God will speak to you ideas that will change your financial trajectory. Between now and the end of, of February, can I hear somebody say amen? So be very attentive. Be very attentive. Carry something to write. Show the Holy Spirit you are serious. Carry a book. Carry something to write, to jot. Yeah, because God would release something. Be careful because today we'll pray against every negative dreams. You'll begin to get divine dreams. I say you begin to get divine dreams. And those divine dreams will give you an instruction. That will make you a solution. Can I hear somebody say amen? You know, I had a, a, a story of a, of a humble teacher who got a divine direction. And, and this is very key. He, was, he just had a divine a, a, a direction in a dream to go and buy, purchase a particular lad. And that lad was in a rocky place. So, well, and the dream was so precise and so clear, he even saw the venue or the place, the location. So he traveled there, ma'am, and he met the owner of the lad. And he said, wow, I, I would like to, to know something about this lad. But the owner was complaining. He was saying, this is a rocky lad. Nothing grows here. So when he had the complaints, he thought, mm, do I still pursue? Do I purchase it? The Holy Spirit said, purchase it. Somebody said divine instruction. Somebody said divine inst inspiration. So he, he, he asked him, would you be interested to sell it? He said, why not? It's, a, it's, a, it's useless. It's a useless lad anyway. Yeah? If you can give me some, this uh, amount of dollars, you can take it. So he went and you know, took all his savings and he came and purchased the lad. After purchasing the lad, he decided to do agriculture. So when he called the people to begin to dig, he discovered other crowd is just rock. Try to hit, it is rock, rock. But then they decided to ex, you know, take uh, uh, you know, off the soil to see what kind of rock. Just to discover the entire land was full of diamonds. And that's why nothing was growing in that land. And it's a, it's a true story. And he saw that instruction in the dream. To go and purchase it. When I heard that story, I got an instruction. That some of you, you are having a problem. And you are saying you are barren because you are trying to do agriculture on gold. <laughs> you carry gold. You carry diamond. But you are trying to do agriculture. So your problem is the smallness of your vision. And this year, I say this year. Whatever is in you shall come alive. I say whatever is in you shall come alive. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that is how a peasant teacher became a multi-billionaire. Why? By divine inspiration. Oh God, fertilize my mind. Fertilize my mind. Let my mind hear your voice. Give me an instruction by the spirit. Somebody say amen. May God give you a revelation in this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, brothers and sisters. For you to enjoy uncommon prosperity, 
you need a fruitful mind. You need a mind that can conceive divinely inspired ideas and then convert them into practical, profitable ventures. A mind. A mind. We read the scripture that with the mind I will serve the Lord. With the mind I will serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Because uncommon prosperity is conceived on the bed of thinking, vision, and ideas. And delivered to you on the table of hard work. It is vision. It is thinking. It is ideas. Can I hear somebody say amen? Success-minded people don't look for money. They look for ideas. Then ideas bring them money. Success-minded people. Today the Holy Spirit will drop an idea. I said today the Holy Spirit will drop an idea. Don't just copy what people are doing. Listen to what God is saying. You remember quails? Ask your neighbor, were you part of it? <laughs> Don't just study and say, hey, they are selling scratch card. Let me do the scratch card. They are doing this. Let me do it. No, we don't follow the thread. We follow inspiration. I say we don't follow the trade. We follow inspiration. Can I hear somebody say amen? Somebody lay your hand on your hand and say in the name of Jesus. I receive inspiration. In Jesus name. Proverbs 8 and verse 12. Proverbs 8 and verse 12. You are about to pray. The Bible says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. There is a category of wisdom that is not necessarily gotten in school. It comes to us by divine inspiration. If you only lean on what you learned in school, you will lag behind. If you want to be ahead, it's time to key in to the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Bible calls it in Proverbs 8 and verse 12. The Bible calls it knowledge of witty inventions or knowledge of creative inventions. It's a unique ability to be creative. Somebody say amen. A unique ability to be creative. And if you will experience uncommon fruitfulness this year, you must have intimate moments with the Holy Spirit. In prayer. And allow him to fertilize your mind. And to begin to release seeds. That you can conceive in the whoop of your mind. Then they can grow. And you bath them. To become businesses. Ministries. And whatever else. In the area or sector of your calling. Somebody say amen. And that may happen in several ways. Are you still here? If you're here say hallelujah. Now listen to this. This what we are speak, speaking now, may happen in several ways. Number one, either the Holy Spirit will inspire you in you a unique way of doing things that causes you to stand out and always get preferred among your competitors. Just a unique way. A unique way of doing things. Mm. Maybe God will inspire you by his Spirit to add an extra idea or uniqueness to your ordinary product or business. And it will make it extraordinary and increase demand. Am I communicating? Maybe God will tell you this season, change your customer service. Yeah, improve your customer service. Or change your packaging. Or change the colors. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, speak. Hear me? The greatest consultant is the Holy Spirit. He will give you ideas that don't fail. Am I communicating? Number two, the Holy Spirit may inspire you to come up with a totally unique product that will be on demand everywhere, causing you to become very rich. A totally unique product. And, and just... 
to borrow from the ministry the, the unique product called DOZ, Daughters of Zion. I tell you, it's so unique in its way, raising the standard among women. I've traveled, you know, I, I, uh, as many of you know, we travel a lot during, during evangelism and mostly in the, in the villages. We major with the villages. I tell you, those interiors places where when you put on the gogo, the gogo tells you sinisumbue. Those interior places. Yeah, those interior places. I meet people when I see they are not receiving me well and respecting me. I just tell them, um, my mom is called uh, Reverend Kadekuna. I see them adjust themselves. I say, yeah, that's right. Adjust yourself. That's my mother. Adjust yourself. You need to adjust yourself. When I say, I'm from JCC at the Bishop Alan Kuna, I say, oh, yes, sir. He say, yeah, yeah, I'm sir. <laughs> Are we together so far? You know why? Because a unique product by the name D-O-Z, woman without limits, is touching the world. Can I hear somebody say amen? Hear me. You shall not be small. I say you shall not be small. You can't be a daughter of great parents and you become small. I refuse to be small and I forbid you to be small. Say, I refuse to be small. Say with me, I refuse to be small. So the Holy Spirit may inspire in you a totally unique product that will be demanded everywhere. Number three, God may open your eyes through divine inspiration to a service gap somewhere. A gap somewhere. You may see a place where there is a need of a product or a service, but nobody is currently available to supply. And that could be a God-inspired opportunity to command uncommon prosperity. What am I trying to say? My point here is God uses divinely inspired wisdom and insight to make his kingdom men dangerously wealthy and fruitful. And that is your portion. I say that is your portion. Say with me in the name of Jesus. This year I shall be very fruitful. In Jesus name. Let me show you a scripture. A scripture. John 3 verse 31. John 3 verse 31. Get yourself ready for prayer tonight. The Bible says, he who comes from above is, is what? Is above all. And he who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. What is the meaning of that? When you download an idea from heaven, it is above every other idea. It is above all other ideas in sovereignty and dominance. When you download, whatever comes from above is above all. That's why you need something from above. So you can humble all other inspired ideas. And will place you in the most influential position in your industry. On the platform of divinely inspired idea. Never forget that scripture. Whatever comes from above is above all. Yeah. So when you tap into the things from above. You become the above. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? Let me tell you this thing. It will begin to pass in a special way. Especially to us, sons and daughters of the prophet. The Bible says in Revelation 11 and verse 15. The Bible says the kingdom of this world. Are become the kingdoms of our Lord. And of the Christ. And it shall reign forever and ever. What is the meaning of that? The meaning of that, God will give you an idea, then place you in the most influential place in your industry, then you shall be used by God to colonize that industry. Yeah, you colonize that industry with the culture of the kingdom, with the mannerisms of the kingdom, with the wisdom of the kingdom, with the character and the integrity of the kingdom. Can I hear somebody say amen? The Bible says, you are the light of the world. But I want you to, that is powerful. But I want you to check the next part. A city that is set on a hill 
cannot be hid. Do you know that scripture means you are equivalent to an entire city put together? The graces, the capacity, the anointing. It's like the entire Nairobi is in you. you are, don't talk about being a villager because you're not even a village. So hear me. Seated here, we have three categories of people. My mom. Three categories of people. Number one, there are those who have no idea of what to do at all. Number two, those who have received divine ideas from God, but they don't know how to convert those ideas into practical reality. People who have booklets or visions that are full of ideas, but they don't know how to translate that idea from the booklet into the practicability on the ground. And number three, those who have already received ideas, they have converted those ideas into practical reality, but they need another dose of divine inspiration so they can move their business or their career into higher dimensions of fruitfulness. So everybody here, you, God has a portion for you. There are those who are saying, I have a business, but I need God to give me an idea to expand it, to enlarge it. There are others who are saying, I have an idea here. I need the wisdom of God to make it practical. There are others who are saying, Lord, I'm here. I don't know what to do. Speak to me. And I want to say this. In every season, God has an idea to cause your company to circumvent hard times. He has an idea to ensure that your company, your career does not collapse with the seasons. There is always an idea that will cause you to make money where others are losing business. The Holy Spirit has an idea. Somebody say, give it to me. Say, we mean, give it to me. Let me give a, an example. You know, because of my passion for evangelism, I remember during COVID, you know, everything was shut. And, uh, you know, evangelism is in the field, preaching to people. So I went to prayer, and the Holy Spirit told me, don't stop evangelism. But then I said, I'm going to be arrested. <laughs> yeah, because you're supposed to gather people. He told me, no, go and buy a truck. And then convert it into mobile church. Put everything there. Put speakers, put everything. All I needed to do, go to a town, stop somewhere. Nobody gathers and preach to them from their shops and their markets. I didn't have a dime that time when the Holy Spirit spoke. So I told one of our pastors, go do shopping. Go look for a truck. Went looking for a truck. When you got it, immediately the money came. Immediately the money came. And that is how we were able to get a truck. And when everybody has shut evangelism, we traveled all over around the city, just stop somewhere, preach, go somewhere, preach. We'll preach even five times in a day, three times, four times in a day. And so many people gave their life to Jesus Christ. Don't tell me that things are tough. There is an idea to escape the toughness. I said there's an idea to escape the toughness. There's an idea to ensure you continue making money, even when the economy is tough. Ask the Holy Spirit. Tell somebody, ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit. Consult. He has an idea. He may actually give you another business idea. As your company products are stabilizing, he will take you to another direction. And before you know it, a billion is in the bank. And when everything else stabilizes, and now you have two businesses that are making a lot of money. Tell, ask, tell somebody, ask the Holy Spirit. You've consulted men for so long. It's time to consult the Holy Spirit. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. One, is, one, is, one of his qualities is omniscience. Yeah, omniscience. He knows everything. He knows everything. He shall give you the solution. Can I hear somebody say amen? Can I prophesy today? You will never be stranded in life. You will never be stranded in life. You will never be stranded financially.
Because the Holy Spirit will only show you the way out. Can I hear somebody say amen? Are you ready to pray? Okay. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 to 10. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 to 10. The Bible says, But, in this scripture, our Father has taught in it, has taught us so many times. The Bible says, But, as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear had, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, But, I say, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit has some matters he wants to download to you. The Holy Spirit has some ideas he wants to download to you. The Holy Spirit has something he wants to tell you concerning your financial journey. Can I hear somebody say amen? Hear me? This year, you must become a friend of the Holy Spirit. You must become a friend of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will inspire into you ideas that will make you a great giant in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear somebody say amen? Very fast. I want, I want us to look at just mentioning a few characters in the Bible, my mom, that God used divine inspired wisdom to make them very wealthy. Say with me, that's me. One of them was, was a man by the name Jacob. Jacob got a divine inspired idea which sponsored wealth transfer. It is in Genesis 30, verse 37 to 43. We won't read. I call it supernatural genetical science. It was downloaded through a dream. Today we shall pray for your dreams. Oh. Ah, these dreams of being chased must come to an end. These dreams of seeing a chicken chasing a tortoise. Pastor, what is the meaning? I saw in my dream chicken chasing a tortoise. No. Kill the chicken, eat, eat it and drink the soup and send the tortoise to the, the zoo. From tonight, receive divine dreams in the name of Jesus. I said, receive profitable divine dreams in the name of Jesus. He received it in a dream. Am I communicating? Look at, look at what the Bible says in verse 9, Genesis 31 verse 9. So God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me through a divine idea. Wealth transfer. I prophesy wealth transfer. Oh, this year, more than any other year, we shall enjoy wealth transfer. God will give you an idea and all the customers that have been buying from wicked people, all of them will be transferred to you. They shall come demanding for your products. Somebody say hallelujah. So divine ideas are God's formula for wealth transfer. Amen. Number two, is Solomon. Papa Solo. The wealth of King Solomon came through divine wisdom. Divine wisdom. Look at 1 Kings 3 and verse 5. 1 Kings 3 and verse 5. The Bible says that Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. Somebody say in a dream. Maybe it's time to begin to pray for our dreams. Yeah. Because it's possible for God to download something, an entire package of information that can change your life in a dream. The Bible says, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God asked, uh, told him, ask. Verse 12. Verse 12. Behold, I've done according to your words. I've given you what? A wise and understanding heart. Hmm. What Solomon received is a wise and understanding heart. That is what we call wisdom. Divine inspired wisdom. It is the supernatural ability to convert the knowledge that you have into applicable, highly profitable actions. Somebody say wisdom. Mm, like we saw earlier, so many people have ideas, but they don't know how to convert them into profitable, 
ventures. But wisdom is ability to think and come up with an accurate solution to a problem and then actualize that solution. Wisdom. Wisdom. Oh, Holy Spirit, fertilize our mind. Give us wisdom. The Bible says by wisdom a house is built. By wisdom a business is built. By wisdom a career is built. Oh Lord, give us wisdom. Say with me, oh Lord, give me wisdom. Do you know that King Solomon was a businessman? He did transport trade, both on land and sea. It was so unique that he became the most wealthy man ever lived. By divine inspiration. Number three is Uzziah. Uzziah, by divine inspiration, he ended up coming up with inventions. Yeah, the first time you see engine, it was Uzziah. And Uzziah was 16 years old. Ask your neighbor, how old are you? Don't wait for an answer. Don't wait for an answer, please. Don't insist on an answer. 16 years old. If you're 30, you're an elder. Somebody say, ouch. <laughs> Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 26. 2 Chronicles 26, verse 5. The Bible says, and he sought God. So that you can know that his, his greatness and prosperity came through divine inspiration. The Bible says, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah. Who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord. God made him prosper. His prosperity was divinely inspired. Can I hear somebody say amen? Verse 15. He made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers. Engines. He, this man was ahead of time by divine inspiration. He came up with engines. Engines that were shooting arrows. Not men. Engines. And throwing stones. All of you from... Uh, the university, you throw stones. Eachings can do better. <laughs> Eachings that could shoot arrows and throw stones. He invented something that nobody has ever invented by divine inspiration. I'm glad to let you know we are going to see a lot of innovations and invention in JCC. I see a lot of inventions in JCC. All the people in the kitchen department, God will give you unique recipes. Unique things that will make you tread in the name of Jesus Christ. Say a bigger amen. amen. Say a glorious amen. amen. The last person as we pray is Joseph. Joseph was a product of wealth, was a product of divine inspiration by the Holy Spirit. Look at Genesis 41 verse 25. And then that give, give me easy. Do you have easy version? Give it to me. The Bible says in verse 25. Make it easy. Make it easy. Are you still making it easy? Are you making it complicated? <laughs> I read from mine. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, Your dreams both have the same meaning. God has shown you what he is going to do. Now, Pharaoh should look for a clever man. He should look for a man who knows what is right and wrong. Tell him to rule over the land of Egypt. So he gave the entire interpretation and then he gave practical ways to be able to secure the economy of the entire country. Now, hear the con con confession of Pharaoh in verse 38. Verse 38. The Bible says, give me verse 38. The Bible says, Pharaoh said to his officers, this man has the spirit of God in him. He agreed nobody can come up with such solutions except by the spirit. Then he said, we will never fight anyone else like him. This country will never fight anyone else like you. Your company will never fight anyone else like you. I'll give you authority in my palace. All my people will do whatever you tell them to do. Only I will be greater than you because I'm the king. That's the only reason. Why? Because the man was in touch with the Holy Spirit. This man 
has the spirit of God in him. How many people you have the spirit of God in you? Lift up your hands. Shout hallelujah. We are going to engage the Holy Spirit. We are going to allow him to fertilize our mind. Do you know this man gave the solution to the entire economy of Egypt? The economy was supposed to collapse. But because a man was in touch with the Holy Spirit, the economy survived. There was a king that had a dream. Ah, and, and the king was looking for someone to interpret the dream. Do you know the kings of this world, they have dreams. They are looking for men who can interpret the dreams. Men who can actualize the dream. Men who can make that dream, that idea, that desire, a reality on the ground. Even today, the president of this nation has dreams. He needs interpreters. You are the interpreter. I say you are the interpreter. They are only looking for interpreters. People who can give solutions. Say, this is what to do. This is what to do. This is what to do. And the nation will be saved. I want to declare in the name of Jesus Christ, as you jump up on your feet, that today we are engaging the Holy Spirit. He will fertilize our mind. He will make us interpreters of dreams. And this nation will be saved.